Welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you in advance for liking and subscribing to my channel. Your support allows me to continue to do these reviews, so thanks. Back in October 2020, I reviewed this Wingsong 601 Flighter style stainless steel vacuumatic with a hooded nib. As I said in the review, many times I'll purchase a pen that I know personally I don't prefer but I buy it just for the review. I was expecting this pen to be the same as I don't generally like hooded nibs. However, once I used the pen, and especially after I upgraded the nib to a Bobby Bent nib, it became one of my favorites and has made my top 10 list of 2020. Here it is 10 months later, and I've done another upgrade where I added a stainless steel hood section to the Wingsong 601 Flighter, which made it my favorite of favorites. I have this pen with me always. It goes out with me. Very few of my other pens leave the studio, but this one goes with me everywhere. I use it constantly for making lists, jotting down notes, taking measurements of other pens for my reviews, and so forth. It is always inked with a Roshizuku Takisume and ready to go and writes all the time, every time. So it's going to take quite the pen to knock this one off its pedestal. I saw the early listings of the new Moonman TI-200 Titanium Fountain Pen with a price tag that made me laugh. I ignored it. It isn't even a vacuumatic pump filler, but a cartridge converter. And the specification said it weighed more than my stainless steel flighter. If it's titanium, how can the same size pen be heavier than the stainless steel version? Titanium is lighter than stainless steel. Then a viewer asked if I was going to pick one up for review. I said, nah, it's obviously stainless steel and they jacked up the price and called it titanium. But then I thought, inquiring minds want to know. So I bit the bullet and I took one for the team and I ordered one from Bobby on AliExpress. I was interested to see if I could tell if it's truly titanium as there are some sciencey, experimenty kind of tests you can perform. So. Is it titanium or is it a ripoff? Let's find out right now. Okay, this is a new pen day and I'm actually very excited about this pen even though I didn't want to buy it. One of my viewers informed me that there was a, a new Moonman fountain pen that was uh, titanium and it's the TI-200, and I looked at it way overpriced and looked at the weight, and there's no way that it's titanium. But then I thought, well, inquiring minds want to know, is it really titanium or not? Because I have a Wingsung 601 Flighter, which I've converted to all stainless steel and put a, a Fude nib into, and I use this pen every single day. It's marvelous. And it's half the cost, I think, of the Moonman. So let's see whether this stainless steel uh, Wingsung 601 Flighter, with all of its upgrades, is the same or different than this new Moonman. Inquiring minds want to know. And here is the pen. But the key thing is going to be, is that stainless steel or is that titanium? Let's find out. So what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. 
So my personal inquiring mind wanted to know a couple of things the moment I unboxed this supposedly titanium fountain pen. Question one, is it real titanium? Question two, is it worth $67.69 US, including shipping? I should update that actually because you can now get this pen for $57.72 on eBay. And there is a new 14 karat gold nib version of this for $93.87 US. Question three, is it sufficiently better than my Wingsong 601 stainless steel flighter? vacuumatic to warrant the extra cost? I'll try to answer those three questions, but first let's examine the Mooman or Mohyang TI-200. Overall, this is a sleek, sexy looking pen with a brushed steel look. For now, let's just call it brushed titanium. From the top, we have a conical finial in brushed titanium. This edge here is actually sharper than I'd like. In fact, all the edges on this fountain pen are sharper than I like. There's a slight seam here, right there, uh, indicating that the top finial is this entire piece. The clip is a very sleek, three-faceted design that tapers to a point and is the only thing on the pen that is chrome-plated. The clip is stiff, but that upturned tip and narrow point make it usable. The cap tapers up to the end of the cap where we see a laser etched Moon Man logo. This is very simple and preserves the sleek, unadorned design of this pen. The barrel tapers all the way down to another conical end finial. The cap snaps off to reveal the long tapering section of this hooded nib pen. Just for a moment, let's compare the length and girth of this hooded section with the classic Parker 51 and now with the Wingsong 601 flighter. The Moon Man section is very long and thin compared to the other two. And while we're comparing, Notice that Moon Man doesn't have the normal P51 style clutch ring, but they've incorporated something very similar to the little ears you see on the Lamy 2000. Here's my Lamy 2000, and you can see the tiny little ears there that aid in capping this pen. And here you see there are three, not two. Let's take a closer look at this nib. Now this isn't a stock Moon Man nib. That was a steel extra fine nib that came with the pen. I wrote with that nib right out of the box, and I have a photo of the writing experience for you. But suffice it to say, I was totally underwhelmed by the dry, thin line it produced. I wasn't actually surprised, uh, as I had anticipated I wouldn't like the nib. I've said before that I dislike hooded nibs for their total lack of character and that includes this 1954 Parker 51. But I had a plan. In my review of my Jinhao 85, I tried everything to get the hood off of this pen and replace the nib with one of my wonderful Bobby Bent nibs. If you have little ones within earshot, send them away or plug their ears, because I'm going to swear now. Warning. The following video contains strong language, which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are they gone? Okay, good. I boiled the shit out of this pen, and it actually deformed the plastic of the section, and I still didn't get the hood off. And that actually reminds me of a joke my sister-in-law Jane used to tell. She was making dinner for Wynn, and she said she was going to make their mom's recipe gourmet pea shells. Ooh, that sounds exotic, Wynne said. How do we make it? And Jane said, well, you take some peas, canned or frozen, doesn't matter, put them in a pot of water, and boil the shit out of them until nothing is left but shells. Gourmet pea shells. My mother-in-law was a lousy cook. What a lousy 
lousy cook. I don't think meatloaf should glow in the dark. <laughs> I leave Dunham Floss in the kitchen, the roaches hang themselves. Wynn's brother used to say he was 16 before he realized eggs weren't black and chicken wasn't pink. But enough of cooking, and back to this boiled pen. Gourmet boiled pen section. I took some online advice and tried pulling the nib with a pair of nail clippers from the front of the pen. And it worked like a charm. And I don't like this Jinhao 85 at all. And that was my last of four Bobby Bent nibs that was in this pen. You can get the Bobby Bent nibs from his Etsy page. I'll link it in the description. So I pulled the Moon Man nib out with a pair of nail clippers and it came out very easily and pushed in the Bobby Bent nib that was in my Jinhao 85. Easy peasy. It took one minute. I'll talk more about it in my likes and dislikes. The section unscrews to reveal the Moon Man converter, which looks as wide as both Platinum and Pilot converters on first glance, but it's neither of those sizes. Interestingly though, it's identical in size to the converter in the Wingsong 628. I shouldn't have pulled that converter out. Now I got Takasumi all over me. Oh well. You look like a bundle of something that's fallen off a garbage truck. What a mess. And here we see a nice addition of a silicone o ring right here on the bottom of the section. The inside of the cap shows a plastic liner to help keep the nib from drying out. The cap posts very deeply and very securely and makes the pen nicely balanced. The pen looks awesome posted, so why wouldn't you post? Unposted, the pen is slightly better balanced towards the nib, so there's one reason you might want to not post. But I love writing with it like this. I bought this pen from Bobby's AliExpress store for $67.69 US, including shipping. The pen is now available on eBay in both steel and 14 karat gold nib options, but it is yet to be available on Etsy. Now let's answer Inquiring Minds question number one. Is this titanium or just stainless steel? I was prepared to do a physics experiment to measure the density of the cap on the TI-200 and compare it to the density of the cap on the 601 Flyter. To do that, I hung the caps by some thread into a container of water and measured the resulting displacement on my digital scale. Then I compared my results with a density chart for stainless steel and titanium. Titanium should be in the 4.5 grams per cubic centimeter range, where stainless steel should be in the 8 grams per cubic centimeter range. Then I took the weight of the cap and divided it by the displacement I found. I compared that number to the density of the material. I got 3.42 for the Moon Man Titanium and 4.95 for the Wingsung Stainless Steel. The Titanium is certainly less than the Stainless Steel, but the numbers just don't seem right. So I figured I screwed up my understanding of physics somehow. I'm sure some of you will correct me. There are obviously other materials in these caps, including plastic and brass. So I'm sure that's throwing the figures off. The only way to get a pure result was to cut off pieces of the metal to perform the test, so no thanks. Then I watched Chris Repsayek's review of the pen. As a metallurgist, I figured if anyone balked at its authenticity, it would be Chris. But he had no problems with it. Then I tried my brain again. These two pens are relatively equal in terms of size and shape. The 601 Flighter has an entire vacuumatic piston mechanism in it and has more ink in it than the Moon Man. And yet the Moon Man is still 5 grams heavier than the Flighter. Um, isn't titanium lighter than stainless steel? I know that's not scientific or definitive, but it just feels wrong. Then I started seeing the TI-200 being called different names on eBay and AliExpress. One said titanium alloy and another said stainless steel TI-200. Sounds to me like the resellers are trying to keep from having their customers complain. 
little bit of cover your butt happening. I'm willing to believe this is titanium alloy in that it is stainless steel with a pinch of titanium dust thrown into the melting pot that makes the quote alloy. Titanium is very expensive, currently around $40 a pound. So I'm very dubious that this is titanium. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Moonman TI-200 with a Wingsung 601 lighter, a Lamy Studio Palladium, it's not really Palladium, a Waterford Marquee, and a Hero 9315. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Notice how short the Moon Man becomes compared to the Wingsung when posted. And the Moon Man is longer than the Wingsung when capped. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Moon Man TI-200 and it has a steel body bent nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet for a hooded nib. And let's take a look at the original nib writing sample. You can see how dry and thin the line was. I wrote just these lines and that was enough for me. I'm sure those of you that like extra fine lines might like the nib if you smoothed it out a bit with some micro mesh. For me, it just wasn't worth the effort. This nib is smooth and has tons of character. And the ink today is Mont Blanc Amethyst. I think Amethyst Purple, sometimes I've seen it called. Here's a swatch of the Mont Blanc Amethyst Purple. I only have a sample of this, but I'm really liking it. What's cool about this color is that while you're writing with it and it's wet, it comes out quite reddish. In fact, with my sample, I don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not, but if you look through the glass or the plastic here, uh, you'll see that it almost looks red. But then when it dries, it dries to this much more towards violet side of purple. As to line variation, well, you're not going to get any line variation by pressure. Vertical strokes are about 0.5 millimeters, and the horizontal strokes are about 0.8. That's not zero, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 millimeters. So that means it goes from a western spine to almost a broad and a Japanese fine medium to a broad. And for our quote, And for some reverse writing, it actually does write very, very, very thin line. So this is a lot of variation that you're getting from this pen. And some quick writing. Yeah, that 
feed keeps up very nicely. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, let's answer some of those other questions here. Question two, is this pen worth $67 US? My answer, no, it isn't. Now that I've put the Bobby Bent nib on it, I really like this pen, but still, what about question three? Is it worth the extra over the cost of my flighter? Well, just for grinners, let's calculate what my 601 flighter cost me. So the Wingsong 601 flighter model cost me $25.20 US, including shipping. And I paid $6.80 for the four Bobby Bent nibs. So $1.70 each. Then I paid $19, including shipping. For the hood. So that's forty five ninety US compared to the Moon Man TI two hundred, which I paid sixty nine. 37 sorry 39 US and I included the dollar 70 for the nib that I put in this pen which makes the difference here between these two pens $23.49 US so the answer is no it's not worth the $23.50 uh, difference between the two pens and let's discuss the new 14 karat gold nib option here for a moment. What is the advantage of a 14 karat gold hooded nib? You can't see it. It won't be soft or springy or have any line variation. Here is the Parker 51 from 1954. It has a 14 karat gold. Uh, fine nib and it is as stiff as a nail not springy doesn't have any line variation the only reason for having gold in this pen is for longevity gold will resist corrosion much longer than steel will if you want your Chinese pen to last a long time just keep it clean and don't store it inked up in a drawer for 30 years. Better yet, get a gold nib that you can see has some spring to it on a pen that has a lifetime warranty. Of course, that'll cost you. In my opinion, the gold nib on the TI-200 is a ridiculous waste of money. Now, the gold nib on this Wingsong 628. Now, there's some money well spent as this nib does have some character. and a little bit of bounce to it as you can see and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote this.